welcome back to another episode of Checking From Behind. I'm Preston, joined alongside Zach. Uh, we got a lot of news to talk about today. First of all, Zach, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's currently about 8.30 at night. We had to switch things up. I'm glad to be here. You were gone last week. Yeah, so. no, I had, yeah, I had some stuff show up. Life happens last weekend, and I wasn't able to make it. But, you know, Zach did make some content, and Zach kind of got flamed this week. Dude. <laughs> two, two, I- two separate videos he made both got him flamed. Yeah. Um, one is definitely deserved. One is debatable. The the one let, let's go over the one you deserve. So Zach made uh, a short. <laughs> for, uh, he posted on Instagram a TikTok. Did you post on YouTube as well? Uh yeah, it was part of the podcast. So, well, he he was going over the top five Pittsburgh Penguins players of all time, like throughout their whole franchise. Now, obviously, this guy has like Mario Lemieux, Sidney Crosby, Malkin. Kind of forgot. One. Wait, wait, wait. I don't mean to stop you there. I wasn't going over top five of all time. I was talking about, so Malkin, I talked about him being a generational player. Um, okay. And then, so I didn't watch the video. I don't watch no, the video. No, you're fine. Um, I don't blame you. And then so I was going through it, and I was like, oh, like, the Penguins had Le- Mario Lemieux. You have Crosby, who's top five. Malkin, who's borderline top 15. And I, never, and I was like, that's three players in the Penguins organization <clears throat> that are all within the top 15, 20. And I forgot Yager. And people were pissed off. Yeah, but- Yager, I, I, I would argue, is clo- is definitely top 10. He might debatably be top five. I, I, he, a lot of people were pissed off because they're like, Yager's top five. How do you forget him? And I'm like, dude, and I made a comment, pinned comment, like three days <laughs> after. Because, mind you, on Instagram, usually we get between one to 4,000 views per real on average. <laughs> It's at 70,000 views right now, right? And I'm like, okay, I'm grateful more that 70,000. More comments calling him an idiot than likes on the video. There was one. Oh, my God. I wonder if there's more comments than uh, I mean, I likes. Get, I, it's easy to forget that Yager played for Pittsburgh. I mean, we weren't alive when he played for the Penguins. Yeah. Because it was in the early 90s. You know, he, won, he was part of that, those back-to-back cups that uh, he won with Lemieux. I, I'd say they don't win those cups without Yager. I know no, they, they Lemieux, don't. but. Yager was just as important, if not as important, if not more important. You know, he kind of, he's been in so many teams and he played for so long. It is easy, I think, to forget that he played for Pittsburgh because he also played for the Rangers, uh, the Capitals, the Flyers, Dallas, the, the Bruins, the Devils, the Panthers, mm-hmm. and the last stop was Calgary. So he played for a lot of teams. Yes, he did. And he also took like f- five years out of the NHL and went to play in the KHL for five years. I'm going through the comments right now. By the way, there's so many comments that I couldn't like reply to. <laughs> this one dude goes, "Bro is really taking fentanyl alcohol." I'm surprised. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> that's out of pocket, right there. I, I find it funny though. Um, oh yeah, I mean, I think the co- comments are deserved. They're so warranted. They're yeah, so I warranted. Mean, I w- I would argue that Yager is a top five player of all mm-hmm. time. He's definitely top ten of all time. Yes. Another uh, thing you were getting flamed for was saying Malkin is a top fifteen player of all time. Yes. I think it's debatable. I don't. I, I wouldn't say he's a lock. He's definitely one of the best players of all time. Don't get me wrong. He's a surefire like first battle Hall of Famer. You know him and Crosby. But I, I don't know about top fifteen of all time. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you, you really deserve to get roasted for that one. That one like, was. That, that's more of an opinion thing. But that that was more me of kind of being high in emotions, talking about Malkin, about potentially being a generational player. And then I stopped myself. I was like, well, the term generational gets thrown around so loosely nowadays too. It's like you like, I was like McDavid generational Crosby, obviously Wayno. Like, see, I think the thing with Malkin is, I think a lot of people might forget how great he is because he did play with Crosby. He's played with Crosby his whole career. They're kind of been tied together their whole career. And Crosby's had a better career than him. Obviously he's won, you know, they both won three Stanley cups. Crosby, I believe, has two con smice. Mm-hmm. One's MVP. Uh, I think Malkin might have won an MVP too. Yes, correct me. He's won. He he's won he his con smice too. He's won his fair share of awards. You know, Crosby's won the Rocket, Art Ross, like a bunch, uh, pretty much every award you can get. So it is kind of easy to forget how great Malkin has been because he's been just as consistent as Crosby throughout his career. Mm-hmm. Like they're both like lock Hall of Fame players. You know, Crosby's definitely a generational player. Yes, he is. Malkin. I, I I think that's a little bit the I, I think Malkin's at that point where you might have some people that say it, but a lot of people will say, no, he's not a generational player. A lot of people 
We'll say that he's just outside of that. I honestly like this. This might be a hot take here. I think if he didn't play with Crosby, I think people would see him in a better light. Yes, and somebody brought that. Somebody made an idiotic comment. I don't really care about what comments are like. If they're engaging, I'll engage with them. Whatever. Somebody said if Cros if Malkin didn't play with Crosby, he did half the points Malkin would have. As in, like Malkin would only have half the points. But they, they don't really play in a line exactly. that together. And, they're and both I, centers. And dude, bro got roasted for, it, and I liked every single comment that roasted because it was an idiotic comment and also like every single all-time great you need to do a like this thing in sports but they don't really play together well that i know much. they don't play together but like you have that partner in crime per se in like sports oh it's like, a great one two like, punch you, you yeah have, don't get me wrong you, yeah like you have ov and backstrom you have stamkos and kucherov you can but, i mean that's a little different though they played on a line together yeah <laughs> but like still though like this this I, narrative I get what you're saying i'm yeah. trying to well i'm trying my point that i'm trying to make is that you cannot slam all-time great players for playing with another all-time no, great no. because it shows the amount of how little people have played team sports. Like, like the whole thing with I don't know. Let's say let's use Crosby for example. Okay, let's say Crosby played with actually you know let's use Wayne Gretzky. I know Wayne Gretzky is a the best player of all time undoubtedly, but he played with who? He played with um he played with Mark Messier, Mark Messier. Paul Coffey, they, Those '80s Oilers teams were insane. Exactly, and nobody care, gives a shit about that. Like no, I don't think that takes away anything from Gretzky or Messi or any of those guys' legacies. It, it exa and it shouldn't either. No, it shouldn't. Like like this whole narrative. Because of even after Gretzky left, like they won another cup without him, and they they went and made their own me legacies. Like Messi also won that cup with the Rangers. Like they all ended up doing their own thing. But if that like if that happened nowadays, everybody's like, oh, he wasn't that important. He wasn't that good if they won a cup. No, that's not how it fucking works. Sorry, I had to get that off my chest. But it gets it gets ridiculous. No, like, I mean, Malkin would be great no matter where he got mm -hmm. drafted. Like. He's a Hall of Fame player. He's arguably generational. I mean, obviously, you benefit from playing with Sidney Crosby, especially you know as a team wise. I don't know if he gets three cups without. I don't know if Crosby has three cups without playing with Malkin either. I think they both need each other for their legacy, which is not a bad thing. No, it's not a bad thing. I mean, I think they're very happy to have played on their same team their whole career. Yeah, there's a reason why they both want to retire as a Penguin. They they keep wanting to play together. You know, they could go to other teams and have a chance to win there, but they care about playing in Pittsburgh and they care about playing together. I think that much is obvious. The joy on their face playing together is just magnificent. Well, I remember to see. a few weeks ago, like the Sabres were playing um, the, the Penguins and they, they scored a goal. Like, Pittsburgh scored a goal like late to tie the game. And like Crosby and Malkin were like hugging each other. Like they won. It was like a playoff game. Mm -hmm. Like during a regular season game in October, like they both care so much about hockey as a sport but they care about each other and their team mm -hmm. so i mean yes they're like they, they add to each other's legacy but that doesn't take it away from them let's move on to another team in the metro the washington capitals that you've been raving about the past week especially yeah, i mean i think in the off season we were raving about it too yes. i thought they had an excellent excellent off season props to us right now i know it's only 12 13 games in but we both had them finishing in the wild card spot making the playoffs so i, think right I might have had them as the you uh, no, all, I, I think i think i had wild card I yeah think, all of yeah. us had them wild card too. i was debating between whether the third seed in the metro or wild card. i mean if they get 13 in metro i, I think it's definitely shocked. possible yeah um, so as of recording right now, because we're recording on Friday night, this won't release until Saturday, Sunday evening. They're currently third in the Metro division, 12 games played six and not six. Jesus, I'm dyslexic. Nine and three for 18 points. And the team ahead of them, the Devils have 20 points. And you're like, okay, whatever, two points. The Devils mm -hmm. have played four more games than the Washington Capitals. Oh yeah. No, I think the devil, I, I, the caps are legit. Like, oh, they are legit. Yeah, like I think the way they've been playing the last few weeks is indicative of their team. They added a lot of depth in the off season. You know, goaltending's been great. You know, Ovi is looking like he's like thirty years old again. I know he's thirty nine, but he honestly, do you think he breaks Wayne Gretzky's record? This I think year? he breaks it in April. I think he has a legit chance. If he keeps playing like this, I think he has a really good chance of breaking it this year. Dude, he has 16 points in 12 games. He has 8 and 8 at the moment, and then he's playing with Dylan Strom right now. At this time last year, people were saying he was washed. Dude, I'm pretty sure at this time last year he might have had one or two goals. I mean, he was pretty bad at the beginning of the last year. And then but. he had a stretch after the first of the year where he went on a ridiculous run. Yeah, but I mean, I think the Capitals are very well coached. I like like the the roster decisions they made, I think have been really really great for their team. You know, bringing in Pierre Dubois has been solid for them. He's been a good. It was ad. a bit of a risk. Andrew Mangiapane has been really good for them. I like Jacob Chikrin a lot on their team too. I think Chikrin adds a lot to that mm. team. Underrated pickup. I know people kind of just after he went to Ottawa and Ottawa kind of moved on for people. I feel like people don't really talk about him mm -hmm. anymore. Well, especially because he's not in the Canadian market anymore. But I think one player I we I'd like to highlight. 
you know, that is, to me. has been oh, wrong player. Sorry. A, been a great big reason why this team has been so great has been Dylan Strom. Is he a, a 1C in this league? Is he a first-line center? I mean, he just proved it. I think so, too. He proved it at down the stretch last year. He proven it at the start of the season this year. I think he's yeah. a legit 1C. Now, I'm not going to throw him into the top two tiers of centers, but, I mean, I think you can throw him into that, that very good first-line center. And I think, honestly, I think he's elevating Ovi right now. Oh, yeah. At Ovi's age, I can, Ovi's a little bit slow, but Dylan Strom has been such a good center for him. He's getting Ovi chances. He's setting Ovi and, up. You know, and Strom's scoring also. Like mm-hmm. he, It's not just Ovi scoring. So when you have you know, when Strom's playing well, it's going to open up things for Ovi. Like he has four goals, 15 assists, 19 points in 12 games this year. You know, And I want to highlight uh, Strom a little bit because it, this wasn't a guaranteed thing for him. So I know he was the third overall pick in his draft, the 2015 draft picked right before Mitch Marner, which a lot of people will go back in time saying that Arizona made a horrible mistake. They did. I mean, yeah, yeah, they did. They could have had Mitch Marner. There was a bunch of great players in that 2015 draft. I think Strom is kind of redeeming himself now. He's still definitely not third overall pick in the 2015 draft caliber, yeah. especially over a guy like Mitch Marner. But, you know, he got drafted, I think, as high as he did because he was playing on a line with Conor McDavid Jr.'s. Dylan Strom's uh, draft year, he went – Nuts. He had no. 75 points in 35. No, no sorry. Um, his draft year, he had 111 points in 56 games. It's called playing with Connor McDavid. Yeah, and he, I mean, he also went to the World Juniors and had good World Juniors. Like, I, I, Connor McDavid was also on that team. <laughs> so he gets drafted third overall by Arizona. Oh, sorry. No, that, that wasn't his draft year at 111 points. Yeah, the had, next year. No, that was his first year, like, after he got drafted. His okay. draft year, he had 129 points. Okay. And 68 games. Dennis doesn't play at all in Arizona his rookie year. Well, his his draft like the year after he got drafted. Mm-hmm. His first year he played seven games at Arizona, one assist, minus five. Gets sent back down to juniors and spends the rest of the year there. Plays on the world juniors team again, has a good world juniors. And he starts he then 2017, 2018, he starts at Arizona. Four goals for that five points, nine assists in twenty one games. Nothing crazy, but you got to remember this is his really his first full year in the NHL. Well, it wasn't even a full year because he only played 21 games, and he spent 50 games in the AHL, and it was a point per game player in the NHL. And then uh, next year, he only played 20 games in Arizona before Arizona kind of made a shocking decision to trade him to Chicago. The big part of that piece was um, Jaden Schwartz. Was it? no? Um, it was Schwartz, Nick Schmaltz mm-hmm. coming back to uh, Arizona, who's been good for them. I think I think him and Clayton Keller have been a big reason why Utah is starting to get better and taking that next step. But you know, in in that year to start with Arizona, he had twenty games, three goals, three assists. Like he was playing horribly, and I think Arizona saw a chance we can get a guy like Nick Schmaltz in and get a. You may me they were doing Strom a favor, like maybe you just need a new change of scenery. Mm-hmm. He goes to he goes to Arizona and gets to play with Patrick Kane, and then immediately looks great. I mean, he has 50, 58 games in Chicago his first year there, 17 goals, 34 fists, 51 points. So he immediately, you know, he has some talent around him finally, and he's starting to look better because he was on the line with Kane his first couple of years there. And then, you know, his next year in Chicago took a little bit, like a step back, 58 games, 12 goals, 26 assists, 38 points. And then uh, the next two years in Chicago, his, his third year in Chicago, 40 games, only 17 points. And then his last year in Chicago, he had 69 games, 22 goals, 26 assists, 48 points. And then Chicago made the shocking decision to not tender him as an RFA. They just let him walk, which I, I that shocked me mm-hmm. when that happened. I think everyone was shocked. Like, okay, he might not be – clearly he wasn't in their long-term plans. I don't know if he just said, like, I'm not playing for you anymore. I want to go somewhere else because he probably saw Chicago was going down the path of a rebuild. It's like, look, I've been in the league this is my, like five, six years now. Like, I know what I can do. Just let me choose where I want to go. I mean, Chicago would have definitely just tendered him and traded his rights. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe it was some kind of situation like that. But he signs with uh, Washington, which was a big pickup for Washington at the time because they were getting older and they needed some young players to – you know, influx into their their system, and he has a good first year with Washington. Really good first year in Washington. Eighty one point, eighty one games, 
first full like pretty much full season in the NHL. He missed didn't have any injuries. Twenty three goals, forty two assists, sixty five points. And then next year he was a little bit better. Twenty seven goals, forty assists, sixty seven points. And this year he's been on a tear to start the season. And I think <laughs> what we've seen the last two years out of Dylan Strom, I think he's I think he's just gonna keep getting better and I think he could be like an eighty, ninety point player. Eighty, ninety points this season. Honestly, uh, honestly, yeah. If he keeps playing the way he is, like he might even have a chance to crack a hundred, uh, realistically. Before we move on from Washington, my dog Connor McMichael. If you guys, when when you guys were listeners last season, if you guys were or watched the podcast, I was kind of vocal on Connor McMichael going into their playoff push about you know what this kid might be something. Now I wasn't sitting here saying oh next season is going to be a breakout season. Watch out for this kid. No, I just liked him. So I think Connor McMichael right now, he has 12 games played, 8 goals, 5 assists for 13 points on page for about 84, 85 points, which, it, I mean, right now the Washington Capitals team is playing out of their mind. All Every single guy on the roster, you have Logan Thompson and Lindgren playing some solid hockey. Um, I ended up posting something on our Instagram story that was actually kind of concerning. Um... So I said that if the Washington Capitals make the Stanley Cup Finals, not win or anything, just make the wow. finals, that I would buy myself a Conor McMichael jersey. So here we are. I mean, they're not going to make it a Stanley That's Cup the Final. Point. That's the point. I'm not. Spend- Why Conor McMichael though? I would just get an Ovi jersey. No, there's just I just some some players I just like I I really like them, and Conor McMichael's one of those guys. So. I mean, you don't got to worry about that because I mean the Caps are are good. They're, they'll probably be a playoff team. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if they get out of the second round. They might win the first round depending on who they play. It's all going to be matchup based. But um, I mean, but if they're a wild card team, they're probably going to have to play Florida. If, if or uh, I don't know, the Devils or the Rain. I I think they could beat the Devils honestly. Rangers in a seven game series. I don't know. Seven game series. No, they might catch Igor on like an off night. But I if mean, they, I mean if. Igor plays like he did last night against the Sabres. <laughs> it's over. Um, I want to move on to the Anaheim Ducks okay. because Lucas Dosto is playing at an elite le- level right now, um, and Trevor Zegers also is playing the worst hockey of his entire career. I don't know how much you've kept up with the Anaheim Ducks at all. I mean, I don't keep up with them at all. I mean, to be honest, they're, they're, they're a West Division. Coast team, and they're bad. All right, so Lucas Solso, as of this recording, has 10, 10 games played. He has a 2-5 goals against and 9-30 savers. And just before, when I threw everything down, he had like a 2-1-5 goals against and like 9-35, 9-40 save percentage. So numbers come down just a bit. And on Trevor Zegerson, I just think this dude needs a, a, a change of scenery. Right now, he has three points in 12 games. He's on pace for the worst season in his entire career. And it's been a trend where his rookie season, he was good. Sophomore season, took a little bit of a hit, but wasn't, you know, wasn't the worst. Last season, did not play good, and now he's playing the worst hockey of his career. And it's, this isn't the case of last season where you had the holdout going into training camp. You had the injuries he was dealing with. So, you know, you, you, you had an excuse for this dude. Now, this season, coming into the season with the contract, a fresh contract that he signed last season, Coming into it with no injuries, coming in healthy, and you're just laying an egg. And you can't say that it's, oh, well, the talent around him isn't good. The talent around him is fine in the top six. Like, it's it could be a lot worse situation. Like, this is, like, I, at this point, think Anaheim just needs to admit they're wrong and just trade Zegers, get him a new situation, and let him flourish somewhere else because it's obviously not working in Anaheim. And you can still get something back for him. But, now, it's not going to be... But, but no one on the Ducks is really playing great, like, offensively. Their leading point scorer is Troy Terry. is 10 points. But, this, like, Trevor Zegers is, is supposed to be your guy. Oh, I get what guy. you're saying. But, I mean, but nobody on that team is really performing well offensively because they suck. Of course they suck, but, like, 10 points in 12 games, They've you have only seven for 25 three. goals this okay, year. Okay, but you still need to trade Trevor. Get him out of Anaheim, dude. I'm not disagreeing with you. I mean, we t- I talked about this in the offseason when we were doing our previews. And when I was talking about how low I was on the Ducks, and mm-hmm. they're proving me right so far because they 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 don't, they don't develop talent well. They haven't been for years. And it, I I feel bad for Dolstel back there because right now he's at a 500 record and he's putting up Vesna caliber numbers. I mean, <laughs> I think any halfway decent goalie on with that Anaheim defense is going to have decent stats. It's just because you're getting so many shots. Yeah, I'm, but I mean, with how many shots he's I'm, facing, I'm not trying to take away from goals him. against. He's is so too well. far. I mean. They they won four games and they have they've only 
score 25 goals. It is so crazy, though, that his save percentage is 930, and he has a 2-5 goals against average. Dude is facing, like, 40 shots a game at this yeah, rate. No, Anaheim's problem is they, don't play, they can't really play defense. No, they can't. They can't do anything. They can't score. They can't play defense. I'm almost, I'm pretty sure they're, they're la- no, they're, t- oh, yeah, they're technically, I point his percentage is the worst team in the league. 321. Yeah. No, they're not. Sorry. 417 points percent. Okay, they're not. Sorry. San Jose is. I mean, they've only played 12 games, so. But I, I'm still really low on the Ducks. I mean, I was a little bit higher than you, and I can kind of see why you're so low on the Ducks because this team can't score. And, like, it, it makes no sense to me because this team has. I mean, they have good young talent. Like, I like Troy Terry a lot. I think he's a good goal scorer. Mason McTavish, I think, could be a dog. I like mm-hmm. Leo Carlson. You know, they have Cutter Gautier. Like, they have what seems like the right pieces is just yeah i i don't know what they're missing i i don't know either and there's nothing it feels like this roster is you you can't really trade away got well okay i think zegers gets traded i, I hope I, he gets I, traded I don't, I don't see a way forward to in him with anaheim i don't think i think a change of scenery would do be best for everybody involved I, and if you're anaheim you know maybe try trading away but he still has some decent value but does he have value? I mean, does he have value the, because of his the, name but, but now? No, but the skill is there. He had sixty-five. He had a sixty-five point season two years ago. I know yes. last year he barely played last year, so I'm not going to really describe Knock him too him for much that, for yeah. that. But like, you see what he can do, and like, and he's a really creative player. He's re- he has really good puck skills. Like, you know what he can bring to your team. I just don't think Anaheim has a need for a player like that right now. They, I think, they need to start. You know. Developing their talent, scoring, play more complete hockey, and you know it's nice. Those those kind of skill players are nice to haves. Yes, they're luxuries. I will say, and, and I, I think mean, you if can... you trade Zegers to a team where you know he doesn't have to worry about necessarily doing certain things because you know they don't a team doesn't have a bunch of holes mm-hmm. as the Ducks do, especially defensively. You know, maybe he can flourish a little bit. Trade honestly, trade him to a team in the East. I would. I'm, I mean, not that that really matters, but I'm just saying, like, at the end of the day, just do whatever gets you best value. Like, if you have to trade him to a team inside your division, like, oh, well, but I would look to trade for him in the Eastern Conference. Off the top of my head, though, I would have to look to see what teams would really be I mean, on but him. The, I also think the problem with Zegers, like, it kind of makes him a little difficult to trade, too. I know he's 23 years old, you know, he could still easily turn it around, but they're paying him five point. Seven five million dollars this year. They'd have to eat some of that if they wanted to move. How long him. is the contract this year? Next year? Yeah, and then he's an RFA again. Honestly, I don't ask Anaheim to eat anything. I would I, take I that on. You got a lot of teams don't have a lot of cap space. You can make cap space in the trade, send downs, waves like I this mean, type of the stuff. Ducks have plenty of cap space, so I don't think it would be that big of a deal for them to eat. I mean, no, it wouldn't be. A, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but I don't think it's a big deal if a, Anaheim's like we're not eating anything. Like if you're a team that can take it on, that can add an asset to the trade or didn't wave somebody, or yada, you know, make a move. Like I think that'd be okay too. It's now, if he was making north of five and a half to six, I'd be like, sure, eat some. Like, I mean, he is making five point seven. I thought five point four. No, oh. five point seven. Yeah. So he's, yeah, I would. I think Anaheim would have to eat some of that contract to move it right now. It depends on the team, though. Yeah, it does depend on the team, but I, I don't. Because like, if you're if you're a team that can for the next two years afford to just take five point seven million dollars and do it. Yeah. But I I'm sure like every everybody goes into it trying to get the best deal for their team like almost like a fleece in a way like I mean let's I tr- say I think Zegra still has decent value like he's only 23 years old I think he could turn it around in the right situation I just don't think I think he Anaheim is not the place for him to be right now I think he just needs a fresh start at this point like, I agree yeah I I think he he had he had a really good year I mean there's a lot of pressure on him. the Anaheim team itself is not good I, I think a fresh start would do him wonders I mean, at this rate, yes. I would like to see for his sake for Anaheim just part ways, and I think I think you can get a trade done by the deadline. Um, or I maybe this, wait. I think this is a summer time of trade Dude, for you me. You think every trade's a summer trade, though? I, I don't know. Teams don't usually trade for younger plays in the middle of the season, especially when I think Anaheim's going to want decent value for him, and that, that, that might be like first-round draft picks, and they might want to see what they have on their draft board. I don't say that for And everything. wait wait till like draft night. Almost see. I think leading be... up to the draft, I think like once Anaheim knows what pick they're having, because they're probably gonna have a top five pick. Mm-hmm. You know, you see what other teams are interested in him, because if you can get a first round, I, I think he's worth a first round pick at least. 
just for yeah. the, what he can be still. I, I still believe in him. The potential's there. You just yeah, I mean, we saw it a couple years ago, like you say, to like he was he was great for them offensively. Like he's not he on a <laughs> show cover of twenty three. Like <laughs> kind of wild. Yeah. And then I just because of that one goal he scored. But, I mean, he was still a premier player, and, I mean, that was a disappointing year last year for him. But, I mean, to be honest, he's on his shit team in Anaheim. And we're yeah. Expe- like, I, I, we're- I think that teams will kind of give him the benefit of the doubt. Like, okay, you're in, like, a horrible situation in Anaheim. Like, they're not a good team. They might not be developing you properly, especially because mm-hmm. you've taken a step back. Let's get you here. Let's get you with our guys and see what you can be. Yeah, I mean, they're – okay. I Before we move on, because I know we've went on a little bit about Anaheim – um, off the top of my head, teams that I think that Trevor Zegers has actually fit on. Now, I'm not, I'm not doing anything with the cap. That I know that's your thing. So when it comes to just what team I'd like him to see, what what team I'd like him to be on. So I think Buffalo, Ottawa, Montreal would be fun. Um, I don't see any of those trade teams trading for him. I don't think they need him. I don't think they need him either. But I think it'd be fun. When it comes to needing him, that's where you get a little bit dicey, to be honest with this, you. I, th- this team, I think, would need to look a little magic to make this trade happen. But I think this is a team that desperately needs a young center. I think I know what team you're going to do. Young center? They need a young center. They're kind of stuck in the mud right now. They lost their franchise center a few years ago, the Boston Bruins. It was I had them, and I... Yeah, I, I, them in either St. Louis or Vegas, I thought you were thinking of. I don't see Vegas doing that. I th- they got Eichel and Mark Stone. They're chilling. That's that's why when you said young center, I was like, eh, they don't have a young center. But then you said they lost their franchise center. I was like, okay, they definitely didn't. Yeah, I, I, mean, don't, I don't mind Boston's Boston still, doing Boston's that. still looking for – I'm not saying he's going to beat Patrice Bergeron, but they haven't found a one really a solid 1C since Bergeron retired. No, they haven't. You know, I know they bring in Elias Lindholm bit of a slower start to this whole Bruins team this year. I know they had this situation with Swayman coming in late to start the season. But, you know, this is a team I think they have a really good defensive system, system really good defensive structure, good goaltending in the past. I don't know how it's been. It's been kind of dicey this yeah. year. But I think Sway, once Swayman gets, a few, uh, gets more settled, I think he'll be fine. But I think that's a team where I'm, I miss me – my, I might be sounding like an idiot right now. People in the comments well, might be flaming People me right on TikTok now. and Instagram are either agreeing with you or flaming you. There's no in between. But I'm just saying, like, I think this <laughs> this would make. I think this trade would make sense for a team like Boston. Yeah, I it. it does I think make sense. I think a team like Boston's always trying to compete to win the cup. Now I think that's how Boston sports teams generally are. I mean, with the exceptions of the Patriots and the Patriots, like, had to completely rebuild though after you know the Tom Brady Belichick era moved yeah. on. But you know, Celtics are always pretty competitive. I don't know anything about the, the Red, Red Sox. Sox are they are and they aren't. They're the like baseball's back and a little forth. different. Yeah, though. yeah, it and, is. and the Bruins are always a competitive team. So there's always that expectation in Boston sports to at least be competing for a championship every year, at least be a playoff conversation. What do you think of Barry Trotz saying that if things don't turn around, that he's going to end up going into the rebuild plan with with the Nashville Predators? I don't know if you heard anything about that at all, but he said that on a radio yeah, show earlier this um, week. I'm calling his bluff on that because with the way he just spent money this yeah. year, he can't do that. I, I was thinking the same thing. Like I listened to the 32 Toss podcast that ended up dropping earlier this morning, and uh, Friedman was talking about it. And Friedman was like, He's not going to go off and sell Stamkos and Brett Pesci, who you just signed for seven years right away. You're not going to trade Yossi for draft picks. It's like, no, 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 no. That's not what's going to happen. And he was kind of saying the same thing. And, I mean, I kind of agree. Like, I was listening to it. I was like, you just went out and had the best offseason that we've seen the team had have in a few years. Well, they also traded away a young pro- up-and-coming goalie. Exactly. So signed, you can't just change your mind signed. 12 games in. Yeah, no. I, I mean, I— I, I know he's trying to find ways to get the team motivated, but that's an obvious bluff. Like he literally cannot rebuild this team right now. Dude, if if I think it's physically impossible to do it. Well, you you're paying Philip Forsberg eight point five, Stamkos eight, March or so five point five. You know, you just Yossi's picking you get nine million dollars a year to him for four more years till he's thirty eight years old. W. You just signed Soros to an eight year contract. Not a bad cap at $5 million, but still, he's under contract for a long time. Uh, no, sorry, it's going up to 7.7. Yeah. Time. But you signed Sketchy to uh, – I always say Sketchy. Say. 
you know, you signed him to a long term deal at seven million. You you literally cannot rebuild this team right now. You're stuck with what you, you got. Can't. You just have to say fuck. You went all in in the off season. You have to keep going all. And listen, if it blows up in your face, it blows up. But guess what? You went out there trying. You went out yeah. there swinging with the punch and. That's, Maybe he makes a shock trade and trades away a player that they didn't expect to send a message. But maybe, I mean, let me look at the roster. I'm trying to think of a guy that could possibly be traded. Maybe a guy like... Gustav Nyquist. Go, yeah, Nyquist. Uh, Dante like, Fabro. Those like are the two a, a guys that... A veteran that you didn't think would like be on the move and mm-hmm. just try to send the message just to motivate the team. It's like, look, I just traded away one of your boys. Like, are you going to play hockey get now? Get it the fuck together. Like, I mean, that might be a little bit of a overreaction it's I not think. an overreaction though i don't know but i think if they want to have a chance to be like actually when they need players like nyquist on their team oh yeah i, I agree i agree and but I, if, I, we're just talking about ways how barry trotz could send a message or maybe send a guy down bury a guy in the minors or something um i don't know i swear to god that happened i don't know what team it was it was recently somebody got sent down and it sent a message to the team and he got called right back up like less than a few days later sounds like a john tortorella thing Maybe it was. I don't know. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe it was like in a dream or something. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, but that's happened before. Yeah. I mean, you, you got to do something to motivate the team. I mean, may, I don't know if they have another concert plan to the Sphere in Las Vegas to cancel. <laughs> but, I mean, I can't really blame them. They're, they look awful. Like, a horror. They're in last place in the NHL right now. They look bad. Right now, in 14 games, they're 4 9 and one with nine points. Yeah, look, look, look at their goal differential. It is a minus 17. I'm That's second worst in the league behind San Jose. Actually, tied for third worst in the league behind Montreal and San Jose. They're tied with Pittsburgh right now. When you have, you know, you, you just signed Soros to an eight, eight-year contract. You have guys like uh, at, um, Roman Yossi back there, like, and you Dude. can't play defense? They're not They're not scoring. They, they've they scored 33 goals in 14 games and well, allowed 50. They're not scoring a lot of goals, but... They're getting a lot of goals scored on them. Yeah. I'm gonna And Yeah, I mean three and a half goals a game is not pretty at all. Allowed. I mean and, and look at the like the teams at the top of their division. Like you, you got Winnipeg, you know, Minnesota's look pretty good, Dallas, like that's tough. I mean You've especially dug your... with Winnipeg and Dallas, like I know we were we were getting flame last week, me and uh and Mug were saying that Winnipeg uh wasn't the best team in the league. Oh, yeah, they, you, I think they are now. You, I apologize to you guys. I wanted to see a little bit more, and uh, they're, they, they, they're on a five-game winning streak. The, yeah. the Jets are legit. Yes, they're, they're very legit. So if the Predators dug themselves into a deep hole in the Western Conference and their own division, I mean, you have teams like Utah, 15 points. You have, like, right now the top three. My, like, I but think look, there's a clear... you got teams like Edmonton. Like Edmonton's going to get their shit together. Exactly. Connor McDavid came back. Vancouver looks good. Calgary is surprisingly good. Vegas hasn't lost a step. The Kings have looked good. Like... You're right now. If you're Nashville, like this isn't the Colorado situation where you've got killed with injuries and now you're just starting to get healthy. No, your top guns that you just paid and that had really good seasons last season are not playing good. So this is not. You don't have an excuse for Nashville except you're playing like fucking dog shit. Pick it up, yeah, or else. I, I, like, I, I don't know what Drozd can like, do right now to send a message. This is though. what's gonna happen with Nashville. They're gonna miss the playoffs this season, but they're gonna get it together after the first of the year, and they're gonna try to go on some miraculous from they did last season, and they're gonna fall short all because they dug themselves into this big of a hole. I mean, but it gets to a point where just you, you if you dig yourself too deep, you cannot get out of it. Correct. Correct, correct. They're going to be six feet underground by the first of the like, year. I know it's still early in the season. Like a lo- there, There's a lot of teams this, in this kind is, of the same situation this, right now. Like what, But they only have nine points. I mean, but, I mean, a lot can change. This is where if you're Nashville, you cannot wait until 40 games into the season to try to go on a run. You have to start stringing wins together now. Like if you win the next three games – you're in good shape. You'll be at seven wins. You'll be back in the thick so of things. Usually, I think a good metric to use, I think, in the NHL to see if a team might legitimately be, have a chance to make the playoffs is I think I usually give it till after Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. I think after the Thanksgiving break, if you look at the standings, you kind of get a better idea of see, what, see, see what teams are. Mm-hmm. You know, Thanksgiving's in a few weeks, so I'll give them a couple of weeks to get their crap together, and then usually... After Thanksgiving, that's when I'll start t- looking at teams with more of a serious judgment. So I'm going to go up um, up to Thanksgiving the 28th. I'm going to go up to – I'm going to list off before I move on up to their um, the games that they're playing up to Thanksgiving. Let me know if you think it's going to be a win or a loss. you want to uh, do that? Sure. All right, sweet. 
So Utah, um, yeah, Nashville against Utah. That's a L. If they keep playing defense like they are, I don't think I don't. I think Utah will all shoot them. Colorado. I'll give them a win for that one. Colorado's still reeling with injuries. Edmonton. L. Calgary. W. Vancouver. L. Kraken. L. Jets. L. Devils. L. Flyers. Win. And I guess the Lightning on November 29th, the day after Thanksgiving. L. So you had a lot of L's in there. Like, I don't blame you. This team's in big trouble. Just from based on what I've seen. Like, I mean, just being honest. Yes. Um. So are, do you plan on to get into the PWHL? This season a little bit at all, or uh, not really, or is it more of a? Not. I mean, there's already so much hockey going. I no disrespect to the women. I, I'm all for women's pro sports. I think it's awesome that they're finally getting a chance to play professional hockey. Women's hockey, I think, is severely underrated. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I barely, I, I pretty much only watch the Sabers, and I watch team. I watch more towards like the playoff pushes. Yeah. No disrespect. I, I mean, it, it's hard to get into. Like, my, my favorite team is Minnesota. And actually, funny story, because I'm going to have Preston blind react to the jerseys that just came out for the PWHL teams. So I'm a Minnesota fan. And so the first ever episode I watched of the Empty Nunders podcast, Taylor Heisey, it was the night. It was right around when she got drafted first over on the PWHL. And I'm a huge Tate McCray fan. And I was like, this girl <laughs> looks like Tate McCray. So then they were talking about it, and they talked about her getting drafted first overall to Minnesota. I'm like, I'm a Taylor Heisey fan. I am a Minnesota fan. And then I did some research. Like, I was watching highlights. I watched the Minnesota games. I was like, this girl can fucking play hockey. So, oh, no, yeah. Like, I was like, this. she got drafted number one overall for a reason. And I went to her, her elite prospects. Ridiculous international play. Yeah. No, especially, especially North America. Like, the Canadian women's team and the Canadian uh, U.S. team. Uh, Canadian U.S. Team. <laughs> oh I'm tired. God. So the Canadian <laughs> women's team and the United States women's team, they're, I mean, they have like a, every time they play each other, it's like much watched TV. Each other. Yeah, I mean, they hate each other. Oh, yeah. And that's most of the league in the PWHL. So, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of hate out there. I mean, I do try to watch the women's Canada, U.S. Canada games, like in the in the World Championships and the Olympics when I get a chance mm-hmm. to, because those are always really, really good games. They are. Um, all right. So, do you have the jerseys up, or do you want to use my phone for it? Uh, I'll, I'll look at your phone. You okay, sweet. Up. So, do you want me to show you the picture of all six teams now, and you can tell me which one's your favorite? Yeah, sure. All right, there you go. Okay, well, you're gonna have to tell me the names. I will. Okay, so the purple one. Um, purple one is Minnesota. Minnesota. Frost. Okay, I'm assuming the victory is Montreal. Yeah. Okay. What is the one with like the C? Um, thing? that one is Ottawa. If you want to, hold like on. Like Cyclones or something? Uh, no, it's something else. Hold on. Uh, I have the names pulled up here because I haven't memorized the name. So you have Toronto Scepters. Boston Fleet, Minnesota Frost, Ottawa Charge, Montreal Victor, and then New York Sirens are the team names. So there okay. you go. I fuck with the Frost jerseys. Dude, they're I, so I like good. the purple. I like the purple. It kind of like I like the logo too. Mm-hmm. Kind of I think it's a good offset for like the Minnesota Wild jerseys. Yeah. I'd say my least favorite one is probably uh the sirens. I'm not a fan of the color scheme. I don't like New York, and I don't like the uh, Toronto ones. Is New York? Th- which one is New York? New York, I believe, is teal. The sirens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Toronto ones. I was uh, the Toronto scepters. That was another one I was on the fence about. The Ottawa ones are okay. I like the Montreal ones. And yeah. Was B Boston? Yeah. Those are cool too, but Minnesota, I think, is definitely the nicest looking yeah, one. Minnesota's yeah, Minnesota's is nice. I think Boston's fits the Boston tradition very well, though. Yeah, no, but I, I think, I think the Minnesota one's definitely the best looking yeah. one. Yeah, oh, it is. You gonna get one? Um, I might. We'll see. It depends how much they are, but yeah. and, like, and I'm not like the Wyatt Johnson jersey is back here. Like, I broke the bank with that 250 fucking bucks. That I'm never are, I mean, wear. I think they're more expensive now than the Fanatics. Ones. Yeah, they are. Um, depending on how much the Minnesota one is, I'm not gonna break the bank on it. But I mean, if it's if it's there, it's there. Like, I can't imagine they're too crazy. I mean, especially for a newer league that's trying to like build fans. Yeah, I think that'd be kind of suicide to charge that what an NHL uh, jersey goes for. Let me look up see how much they are. I mean, they're already selling out. 
Yeah. The league's growing fast. Do you said Taylor Heisey is your favorite player? Yeah. So it's $225. Oh. Uh, that's like if I have the money, I'll get it. If not, then it's not a big deal type thing. Yeah. I mean, I fuck with those jerseys, though. They're nice. If you guys, if you guys are looking to get in PWHL, they stream every single game on YouTube for free. So if you guys are like, you know what, want to check it out, go to their YouTube channel. They stream every game there, which is sick because they make it very accessible. It's not like the fucking NHL. We have to get every single streaming service imaginable to watch one game. So it's nice. You just wait till they start putting games on like fucking Netflix and stuff. Like oh, the NFL's doing. <laughs> yeah, you ready, you ready for the NFL Christmas games on Netflix? Dude, two teams, the Seahawks and the Texans, have to play three games in eleven ga- days, and one of them's on Christmas, on fucking Netflix. Who puts a sports game on Netflix? I mean, they put them on Amazon. It's not that much different. That's true. Am- Amazon is. If, basic- I'm the, if I'm the NBA, I'm pissed that the NFL is trying to take off take Christmas games because for years that Christmas game was like the NBA day. Like you guys got Thanksgiving, we get Christmas. Exactly. And I was like, you know what? We want Christmas yeah, too. Fuck you. And the NFL shows like, we have New Year's. It's like, not really, but you do. Yeah, you know, you do, you do your own thing. Um, is that all? Is that all you have with the PWHL? Yeah, I mean. Uh, I'm happy they're starting to grow. Maybe like start expanding soon. Get some more teams. Yeah, there like, are rumors. I feel like Buffalo would be a good fit to get a team. There's rumors that there's gonna be they're gonna expand to two more teams after this season. It's gonna end it for today's episode. If you guys enjoy all of our content, all of our socials are down below, as well as the subscribe and notification bell. If you guys are listening on Apple and Spotify, head over to our YouTube links down below. More exclusive content over there. Join our Discord down below. We'll see you guys in our next episode. 